Hi, in this video, we're going to cover the Chapter 7 Excel workbook. Okay, so let's begin. We will start with the presentation example one sheet. So as you can see on the left hand side, we have, and I'll make this a little larger, we have the month and units sold, okay? And it's asking us for three values, the mean, standard deviation, and how many values, that is how many months do we have units sold greater than 100. Okay, so pretty much mean in cell E2, we'll take an average. I'm just gonna select count on B, so average B. This is an average of mean of 96. The standard deviation is equal standard. Does T D E V dot S. Again, same thing, column B. I'll select column B. 8.833, so our standard deviation. Finally, how many values greater than 100? So I'm going to use the Excel formula called count if, in parentheses, again, my range is column B. And what's my criteria? Wants to know, Excel wants to know what's the criteria. I would in comma, double quotes, greater than 100. Double quotes, close it, and close parentheses. And it gives us a count of one. That means of the five values we have, we have one value that's greater than 100. Notice here, I can change this here. It just says like 90. That will have four. One, two, three, four. Four values greater than 100. So I just have to just change this number here, for example, to determine my new count. And, and again, we're only dealing with five numbers. But what if we had, you know, what if we had 500 or 5,000, okay? All of these formulas would apply no matter how many numbers we have in column B, okay? Set this for us. Let's look at example number two, okay? Story problem says our population has a mean of 200 and a standard deviation of 50. Suppose a sample size of 100 is selected and the mean of the sample is used to calculate the mean of the population, okay? So it says, question is, what's the probability that the sample mean will be in plus or minus five of the population mean, okay? So how do we figure that out? Okay, so let's, let's take a step back. Let's follow these four values, okay? We need these four values to figure out this answer, all right? So the mean, it says here, is 200. So I'll make this a little larger for us. So type in 200. Standard deviation. Standard deviation, it says here is 50. It's a sample. What's our sample? Well, again, from the problem here, it says a sample size of 100. Probability within. What's our probability within? Okay. It says here, what is the probability that the sample mean will be within plus or minus five of the population? And so we need to know for the five here. And notice what it does here. Let's, let's look at all, my, all these numbers here. So it says for plus or minus five, so if my mean is 200, minus five would be 195, and then plus five, 200 plus five is 205, okay? So this kind of just does some concatenation here, and then some concatenation there, just to kind of make this a little bit more um, understandable. And so it gives us for plus or minus five, 195 less than or equal to x equal to, or greater, I'm sorry, greater than, 195 and x is less than or equal to 205. So that's within five, okay? The z score, let's see this thing here. It does the standardization of c here using these numbers here, all right? And then it does a, the same thing here. The z score for 195, it says here, is using a formula called norm.s.dst, which takes this value here and this value here and gives us our, our z score. Okay. And what this is going to do is we'll look at this carefully. And I look at these two numbers here and I add them up, it adds up to one. Okay. So I'm going to go down here and it, and it gives us the answers here. So if I was to ask you what if it was x was less than 195, it would be 0.15. X is between. 195 and 205, which is the answer is 0.68. So 
That's our probability is 0.68. And if x is greater than 205, it's 0.15. So look again, these three numbers add up to what? 100, one, okay. So our answer is 0.68. And I'm just doing some math here, taking my values here and subtracting, like I'm subtracting 84 from 15 to get to 68. Let's see. And then this here is the difference of the two. And that's how I come up with the 68. So that's our answer, 68. So the problem within the sample mean of being plus or minus five is 68. Okay, let's look at example number three. It's basically the same exact problem. Let me make this larger here. It's not, it's same numbers, same exact numbers from example two. And now it's asking us plus or minus 10. Okay, so again, let's see. The mean was 200. And the was 50. Sample size is 100. Those three numbers didn't change from the last time, but uh, now what's the probability within 10? So that changes the probability within 10 change from the last problem. Notice again, it does all the calculations for us. Okay, so it takes the, it takes and does the, um, you know, figures out for plus or minus 10, 190 is uh, less than or equal to X. X is legal, less than or equal to 210. It calculates our Z value here, so it's 97.02. Takes 97 minus the 0 0.02 to come up with 95. So our answer is 95. So this time with X is being 95. So if we look here now within 10, let's look at the difference between the two of them. It says 95, well, let's say 95%, okay? This is, this is within five is 68%. So now that I made my probability a little larger, this value becomes, this percentage becomes greater, okay? So we have a larger chance because this number here is greater, okay? Let's look at the, let's look at example number four. Our population proportion is 0.4. Sample size of 200 will be taken in the sample proportion, P-bar, We'll be used to estimate the population proportion, okay? So I'm gonna round off my answer to four places to not round intermediate calculations. So what does that mean? It says here, what is the probability that the sample proportion will be plus or minus 0 0.03 of the population proportion? So now we're using these formulas here to calculate our, our sample proportion, okay? And we wanna know if it's gonna be a plus or minus 0 0.3. What's the probability if we pull the sample that is, it represents my plus or minus 0.3 of the population, 0 0.03 of the population proportion. Okay, so how does this sheet work? So, population proportion says 0.4. The sample size is 200, and the probability is within 0 0.03, okay? And the same thing it says here, for plus or minus 0 0.03, we have, so we're taking our 4, 0.4 minus 0 0.03, so we get 0.37 is equal to or less than P, and P is equal to, or I'm sorry, P is greater than or equal to 0.37, but P is equal to less than 0.43, okay? It calculates the Z value here of 87, and right here we get 0.8 and 0.19, which again, you add these two up and you get one, okay? So our answer is right here. So it's within three, would be right here. Point, can you the screen for us? 0.61 is our answer. So the, the probability is about 61%, we'll say, okay? And again, if I look at these three numbers here, they add up, okay? They add up to um, one, all right? How do we come up with 0.87? Again, it's taking a, uh, this formula here, to take the population proportion, the value within, and then this value here to come up with the 0.87 for our Z value that we calculated, okay? All right, let's look at our last sheet on this workbook. This one here is saying here, the president of, let's look at the story problem here. The president of Dom 
common distributions means that 30% of the firm's orders come from first-time customers. A simple random sample of about 100 orders will be used to estimate the proportion of the first-time customers, okay? So we're, what they're doing is they're saying, hey, the president's saying, hey, 30%, 30%, okay, of our orders, he believes comes from first-time customers, okay? All right? So they're gonna pull a random sample of 100, okay? So a population of all our orders, of all our orders, he's thinking is, is first, that's first time is 30%. So it's 0.3 here, okay? Sample size, he pulled 100, okay? So it's a 100 here. And so, okay, so this is the two numbers we're gonna to use to, to, to do our calculations, okay? We'll get to the answers here in a minute, okay? But let's see, it says E bar, okay? is 0.3 that was given to us. Um, our standard deviation of the pocket proportion, the mean proportion is 0 0.04. And then this is a check. Remember from our chapter, we have to check to see if n times p is greater than or equal to five. So n, which is 100 times p, which is 0.3 is 30. And yes, that's greater than five. And then n in parentheses one minus p, is greater than or equal to five. So n again is, is 100, one minus p, so one minus 0.3 is 0.7. So 0.7 times 170, okay? So, so we, we pass these two checks here at forward. Um, what do we get here? Let's look at part B and C. How do we answer part B and C of this problem? It says, what's the probability that the sample proportion will be between 0.2 and 0.4, okay? So what's our range? 0.2 and 0.4, okay? So that's our range. And we're calculating again the z values here and using our Excel formula called norm dot s dot dot v i s v i s t, okay? So we get 98.01. And if I add up these two values, it comes to 100. But again, we're looking for this here. We're looking for that within, okay? Um, or, or between, so what's our, our chance here is 0.97, okay? So the probability that the sample proportion will be between 0.2 and 0.4 is about 97%, okay? What's your probability that the sample proportion will be between 0.25 and 0.35? Okay, well, simple. I'm going to change these two numbers here. Again, the population proportion did not change. The sample size did not change. I'm going to type in 0.25. I'm going to type in Let's see what happens here. Ah, okay. <clears throat> so now it's 0.72. So the range went from 0.25 to 0.35, changed here, and gave us 0.72. And that concludes this video on the Chapter 7 Excel book.